All right, ladies and gents, here we go. Starting with our blue player, Carl Harman. Going to have three red crescent skinks, one of which will be the cohort of Sotek. Three units of skink cohort, one skink cohort with javelins. We're going to have four units of Croxigor. I want you to look at that, guys. It's a lot of Croxigor. Also going to have a healthy skirmish force in the form of three Pterodon Riders, including the Pahawk Sentinels. We're also going to have a Feral Stegodon, ready to charge down some of these little stunty foes. Over here we have Skink Priest of Beast, with the Manticore Summon. And then leading this army, we have a Skink Priest of Beast with the Manticore Summon, who I literally just said. Anyways, we also have a Croxagor Ancient. Gonna be bringing the Horn of Kyagor Amulet of Itzel. And that will be it. I love me a Croxagor army. Now, over here we have the Dwarfs in an interesting formation. We'll see if it's done or not. Um, going to have Longbeards for the front line. We have Miners with Blasting Charges on either wing with Dwarf Warriors. We're going to have two Thunderers, Giant Slayers, one, two, three units of artillery, two Bolt Throwers, and a single cannon. We're going to have two regular Slayers holding down the rear. And then we are also going to have Ulthar's Raiders, Rangers with great weapons here in the center pocket. A Rune Lord going to be bringing Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin, the Rune of Negation, and the Master Rune of Grugni. Now, I do believe that rounds out this force. Let's see what happens. Okay, pushing them out a bit more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. The battle has begun. The Dowie are opening fire with their cannons and their bolt throwers. It does look like they're targeting the Croxagors. Bolt throwers might be targeting the Pterodons, interestingly enough. I think, I mean, it makes sense, but you do have the Thunderers, and I figured that's kind of more their role. You want to be eliminating Croxagor as quickly as possible. But right now, I think this Dwarf Army's going to have to work cut out for. Unfortunately, they do have three Slayers, and those Longbeards should be able to hold out a long time, and the Slayer's obviously unbreakable. So we'll see what the Dawi can do here. Right now, Pterodon Riders going in for a bombing run by the looks of it. Yep, there they go. This one, not the most effective bombing run. Over here, a very effective bombing run. And this one doing a decent job. So, I mean, right now, Lizardmen, nice bomb to start out that charge. Croxagor, Red Crested Skink Infantry coming in to support afterwards. Manticore Summon going down on the back lines. One Pterodon Rider is routing. 
Thunder is doing a pretty good job shutting some of these guys down. Teradon Rider's being used to try and shut down the artillery now. Slayer's coming in here to clog the front lines. And uh, they absolutely need that. Because if the Dowie can mop up the remnants of these Teradon Riders quickly enough, then they have the chance to win this battle. Because the front line isn't going to win this battle alone. They're just there acting as an anchor. And with Longbeards and Slayers holding down the front line, they're buying some time. But it looks like it may not be enough. As some of the Lizard Men units are pulling through and starting to crash into the juicy, juicy center of this dwarf army. Blasting charges coming out, doing a ton of damage on top of these King Coers of Javelins. Cannons still online. Bolt throwers have been compromised, though. Raider, Rangers have been compromised. Uh, got the Thunderers over here routing these guys. Regrouping, maybe going to be able to pull something back together here. But now the balance of power is shifting very, very much in favor of our blue player, the Lizardmen. And, uh, oh no. We've seen crazier things here before in the HW League. But with another Manticore summon inbound... Crocs War Ancient virtually untouched. I don't know if this is going to work out. Also, not to mention the Ancient Stegod or the uh, Feral Stegodon doing so well still, too. In the front lines, how are we doing for the Slayers? Longbeards and Giant Slayers still holding down the center. Some Slayers and Longbeards still holding down the right, but the left has crumbled under the pressure. And yeah, the balance of power is really shifting decisively now. It does look like our Rune Lord is routing. And that's going to be a GG to Call Harmon with the Lizardmen in this first round of their best of three. I literally give no fucks. I'm just wading through you like a woman at the beach. <laughs> he just like did a little punch. Hey, Shadoku, good to see you, friend. I mean, yeah, just a nicely built and executed Lizardman army. Croxagors, Pterodons, the way to go. Dowie just got overwhelmed a bit too quick. I, I, I think he needed more meat on the bone here. Um, I liked the infantry a lot, but I, I don't know. Maybe ditch the bolt throwers and just bring another cannon and then save a little extra gold that way because these are, what, 550 a piece? If memory serves me right, so, that, you know, you get 1,100 for two of them or 800 for a cannon, so that saves you 300. Maybe you ditch one long beard, and then you just use that to get a couple more Dwarf Warriors or Miners with Blasting Charges. I think Miners with Blasting Charges in this matchup can be very viable because of the tendency of players to bring a lot of Red Crested Skinks, and they don't have much armor, so Blasting Charges, I think, can get a lot of value done there. But all in all beautiful game let's see what happens in round two and before we go update that scoreboard ladies and gentlemen here we are the map is alpine ridge and we've got the wood elves versus the empire starting with our red player the empire being led by rtk felix we have uh, quite a lot of state troops as you may expect sigmar's sons Along with two swordsmen, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five spearmen with shields. Two huntsmen. Outrider. Got Knights of the Blazing Sun. It looks like three of them. Going to have... Um, that's the infantry I just went over. <laughs> and then uh, 
to round out the rest of this force, we have the leadership squad. It's going to consist of two wizards. One of them being a bright wizard, and the other a jade wizard. Jade wizards are going to have earth, blood, and the power stone. While that bright wizard is over here is going to have burning head and flaming sword of ruin with kindle flame. Volkmar the Grim on top of his big old wagon is going to be coming to the field as well. He will be bringing Grand Soulfire, Grand Shield of Faith, Grand Hammer of Sigmar, Banishment, and the Jade Griffin. Now for our Wood Elves here, let him blew by ODM Karl Harman, who was on his match point. Eternal, Eternal Guard, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like they're going to have shields. Uh, just one of them. Two of them are going to have shields. Three without. We're going to have some dryads. Also going to be seeing a skirmishing potential of one, two, three, four, five deep wood scouts. Going to have some wild riders with shields up here to support them vanguarded. And then we have Draika. Draika is going to be on foot, of course, or on route, I should say. She will have Rouse to Wrath, which has been reduced to a one-time summon. Penumbral Pendulum. And that's going to be it. And then last but definitely not least, we have the mysterious Zotes. These turtle ogres are going to be in the back line since they don't have Vanguard with the Eternal Guard. And uh, we'll see what happens from here, chat. But interesting armies to both players. And uh, we'll see how these Zotes do. Knights of Blazing Sun do have some nice magic resistance. But... Dampen is another trait the Zotes have, so basically they're going to reduce the magic resistance knights that the bla um, Blazing Sun already have, so they're going to have a grand total of 3% three magic, 3 magic resistance if they go into that combat. Alright, all the Empire State Troops do have shields, so 33% block chance. On top of the fact that they're already very cheap in the first place. Huntsmen are going to start opening fire, and it looks like, uh, yeah, going to be zoning out the Deepwood Scouts. Who are pulling back without, I mean, they're getting some value. Definitely a lot of chip damage here, but, uh, you know, it kind of plays into the Empire's advantage if most of the ammunition is spent shooting State Troops. Over here, Wild Rider is poking forward, but going to retreat at the sight of both of those Knights of the Blazing Sun. It looks like the Wood Elves are just going to pull back, continue harrying the forces as they retreat, and they're going to fight them here in the open field. Just buying as much time as possible for their archers to do the business of the day. It's a Blazing Sun pushing forward. Looks like they may be trying to catch these guys. Over here, a Banishment coming down. It's going to catch these guys. At least some of them not doing the most damage. So perhaps a bit premature. But we'll see what happens. Knights of the Blazing Sun desperately trying to catch these Deepwood Scouts. But it looks like they're not going to catch them in time. Zotes are coming in. This is going to have to be a very quick charge indeed. There they go. They hit them hard. And now they need to pull out. And it looks like they're about to do so. freeze frame uh this is pre-planned you know every now and then i like to tell the players like hey freeze it i want to get some action shots whoa look at this guy you know freeze action shot looking awesome rtk felix no 